Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update from August 1st, 2022. I'm gonna begin with an update on an ongoing story that we're covering, which is the attempt by the Ukrainian Center for Combating Disinformation to silence the Schiller Institute as well as other uh, opposition figures, that, meaning those who are opposing the arming of Ukraine and the continuation of the war against Russia. Uh, as you probably have heard in, in previous reports, there was a list of 79 people described as promoting Russian propaganda. 30 of those people on the list were participants in Schiller Institute forums on the need for a new financial and strategic architecture, uh, many of whom are opponents of the war, uh, and included prominently in that list are, are Helga Zepp LaRouche, the founder of the Schiller Institute, Jacques Cheminad, the leader of the LaRouche organization in France, Diane Serre, the LaRouche independent candidate for a senator from New York running against Charles Schumer, Jason Ross, and me. The Ukrainian Center is a government agency of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, operating under the direct authority of President Zelensky. The more than, uh, well, several billions dollars of money from the United States has gone to fund the Ukrainian government. And it's likely that some of that money has gone to fund this agency. And this uh, center is working in collaboration with disinformation operations from the U.S. government, the, the State Department, as well as the British. Now, the list was released on July 14th. And at that time, the director of the center, Andrei Shapovalov, stated that those named are, quote, information terrorists, unquote, and should be charged as, quote, war criminals, unquote. Now, others who were on the list included Scott Ritter, Colonel Douglas McGregor, Glenn Greenwald, and Tulsi Gabbard. And Ritter said these threats should be taken seriously as death threats because the Ukrainian government has a very brutal way of dealing with its opponents. Now, why were people placed on this list? Well, for expressing their views, which in the United States are constitutionally protected, freedom of speech, but their views on the ongoing efforts of the US, UK, NATO operations to use Ukraine as a battering ram against Russia. The citation against me, what they identify is a presentation I gave where I said the Ukrainian government is complicit in the deaths of Ukrainians and the destruction of that country for demanding more weapons and not negotiating with the Russians to end the fighting. Now, interestingly, the role of the Schiller Institute, which means 30 names of the 79, has not been identified in the media. The media, there have been several articles, several reports out on this list, but they tend to identify the more prominently known and acceptable opposition figures like Ritter and Greenwald, but have not mentioned the obvious uh, elephant in the room, which is that 30 of the 79 names are of participants at Schiller Institute events. In other words, the LaRouche organization has played a leading role in fighting for the truth about what's going on in this operation in Ukraine, which threatens to put the world on a course toward World War III and nuclear war. So this is a, a key example of both our influence, as well as the fear of those who are running these operations of allowing our influence to be made generally known. And I think many of you already know that the Schiller Institute has been in the forefront of fighting for a new financial and strategic architecture. And that it's obvious that the powers that be don't want that debate to take place. Now let's take another example of information warfare. On July 29th, rockets hit a detention center in Donetsk, in the city of Donetsk, 
where there were close to 200 Ukrainian POWs being held, most of whom uh, were captured during the surrender of the Azovstal plant in Mariupol. And most of them are members of the Azov uh, Battalion, which is the grouping of neo-Nazis at the forefront of the war crimes committed over the last eight years from shelling Donetsk done by the Ukrainian army, in particular by these neo-Nazi militants. Now, the Ukrainian government claims that the Russians bombed the, the detention center and killed them to cover up Russian torture of POWs. Now, why would Russia kill would-be witnesses at war crime trials that would expose what the Ukrainian government has done and the use of these neo-Nazi battalions to carry out a suppression of the populations of Eastern Ukraine, at the same time, violations of the Minsk agreement, which was signed by the Ukrainian government. Why would the Russians kill them? Moscow says they have evidence that US supplied HIMARS rockets were used by Ukraine to kill the potential witnesses. And Moscow has called on the UN and the Red Cross to conduct a full investigation. So we'll continue to update this story as it unfolds, but it identifies once again the role of the information warfare in controlling the narrative to make this a war of brutal Russian autocracy against the freedom-loving people of Ukraine. And I'm, I'm sure increasing numbers of people in the West are seeing through this narrative uh, for the lies that it represents, and more importantly, as a justification of the operation against Russia. Now, there are other developments to report. Just briefly, Nancy Pelosi is in Singapore. Will she go to Taiwan? This has become a critical issue. Uh, why would Nancy Pelosi go to Taiwan? To escalate the provocations against China. The, the Chinese have said that this would be an extreme provocation. There are reports from coming from U.S. circles that maybe China would try to interdict her air, uh, airplane on the way in. Uh, most of this is speculation. But interestingly, Donald Trump was among those who said she should not go. But among those who are supporting Pelosi's visit uh, is Mike Pompeo, Trump's former Secretary of State, who was a leading war hawk who was sabotaging the attempts by Trump when he was president to reach agreements with both Russia and China, as well as North Korea. Uh, this is just another example of the collaboration between the war hawks in both parties, with war hawks like Pompeo from the Republican side supporting uh, Pelosi, who is, uh, along with Chuck Schumer and others, leading figures on the Democratic Party supporting war and, and terrorism. Now, finally, let me just mention the debate over whether or not the economy is in a recession. This just demonstrates the overall incompetence and devious intention of those who are making policy. Uh, top on that list are Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell and former Fed Chair Janet Yellen, who is now the Treasury Secretary. Remember, these are two of the leading people who denied there was a problem with inflation. They talked about it as a trans transitory inflation. They're continuing to cover up their role uh, in the extended bailout policy since 2008, which bailed out the speculative financial institutions, insurance companies, banks, and others uh, at the expense of the real physical economy. And that's the reason we have inflation today. Now, the problem, the real problem is not a recession, but a systemic economic financial breakdown crisis. And what the Schiller Institute and the LaRouche Organization has been mobilizing for is a conference for a new financial architecture based on replacing the existing neoliberal economic paradigm with one based on the American system of physical economy associated with Lyndon LaRouche. 
I'd encourage you to join our mobilization for this because it's the same fight. The people who are presenting the narratives of the economy's really okay, we just need some higher interest rates and a little pain to get through this, are the same ones who are defending the massive flow of arms going to Ukraine and going no one knows where from Ukraine. Uh, why is this expenditure taking place? Why are the lies about the economy? Because the whole system of the transatlantic governments uh, is breaking down. And instead of moving toward a new system, they're willing to risk the danger of World War III and nuclear war to protect their fat financial interests. So join with us, mobilize with us, get our reports out, and uh, I'll see you again later in the week.